The story of parallel human processing starts with how we, as humans, have changed the world around us. We've created technology from fire to space shuttles. We've, we've changed our habits. We've moved from the jungle and we're living in urban spaces. And we did all of this to fit our lives. The latest change that's happening is bigger than anything that has preceded it. And it will probably be recorded down in history as one of the biggest things that has changed the course of human history. If you haven't guessed it already, I'm talking about the effects that the internet has brought to our lives. When the internet started, it was simply a simple file transfer protocol that allowed files to be moved around. But then we quickly used it and migrated it to be used in the form of communication as an email. And we gradually improved it and improved the technology and uh, to be used in the form of uh, commerce, entertainment, um, collaboration, among so many other things. But of all the benefits that the internet has provided to us, one kind of really stands out. And it's not really an obvious and it's not really an obvious implementation of the internet. It's how the internet has become this socio-cognitive framework in which people, systems, frameworks, and functions can all work together to create what I'm referring to here as the parallel human processor. In such a system, people work together to create uh, a a network, of, uh, a network of systems where people can work together to solve a very complex, highly human tasks, far better, faster than the most complex artificial intelligence system that's out there. Let's pause for a second and think about this. Back in 1956, we created artificial intelligence to help us simulate the complexity of the human brain and to be used in situations where we need intelligence. That looked like this. This is a simplistic view of a very simple artificial neural network. Um, this is the basis upon which the artificial intelligence system is created. So what we did afterwards was we've taken that model and uh, we zoomed in 64 years later with uh, billions of dollars spent into that industry. And what we ended up with is a system where it can be used quite successfully in the areas of robotics, data processing, and uh, data modeling. But this system failed the basic premise. It failed to create an intelligent system that allows us to detect the simplest things. It failed to let us know whether a joke is funny or not. It failed cognitive intelligence. Now, five to 10 years ago, something really interesting happened. Five to 10 years ago, the first social communities started appearing on the internet. Organized social communities started appearing on the internet. We started getting into places where people get together for the topic that they're really interested in and are passionate about. And this is what uh, got transformed into a very complex neural network where every one of those neurons became replaced with a very complex human brain, a fully functional human brain. And those axons that connect the neurons became the internet. And what that looked like is something like this. It's Twitter and Facebook. And it's what I also call the parallel human processor. It is the system upon which we can build so many other cool things. But the question is, how do we utilize that system? How do we take advantage of that system and use it to solve really complicated tasks? And it's not an easy question. So what we've done is we've used this technology to be used in many different ways that allows the system to be to solve problems that needs cognitive intelligence. This system can easily determine whether a joke is funny or not. And humans do so because it's, they're wired in their brains to, do, to perform tasks like these. We tweet about 
the weather because we want to report it. We naturally want to do it. <coughs> we uh, improve a Wikipedia entry just for the sake of improving it. We tag a picture to organize it. We go into uh, the YouTube Symphony just for the sake of doing it, to improve the system. Now, every one of those uh, tasks is small on their own, but when you put them together, you get a system that is highly relevant and highly intelligent. So, the premise of uh, the company that I'm working at right now, the company that I founded was the basic interest that I have in online video, the basic interest that I have in video. Back when I was young, I had a video library of 300 videotapes. And it was a common task for me to go and find the video that contained a specific song. And going through the library was not an easy task. I had to go through a system like this. Go through all the different tapes that I have, and for each one of them, pick the ones that are in the music category. And for each one of those, put them in the VCR, forward, rewind, forward, rewind, until you find that video. It's a, it's a very time-consuming task. Then the internet came along, and we figured with the internet, this problem is solved. You can go to YouTube or Google, search for uh, the song name, and find it. Well, true, but as the system improved, so did our expectations. In preparing for this TED Talk, I wanted to find the video. I wanted to find a specific scene within a video that I had watched earlier. It was about how the internet has become the first medium in history that allowed many-to-many -many communications. So I went through a similar process. And I went to YouTube and TED. I uh, clicked on a bunch of videos that I thought were the ones I was looking for to find that specific scene. I still went through the same task, forward rewind, forward rewind. And it took me 43 minutes to find that video that I was looking for. And just for the record, it was Clay Shirky's cognitive, uh, cognitive, how cognitive time is going to change the world in the future. So after having spent all that time, I realized that the internet is making the problem worse. The internet has a huge video library that's growing at 100 years of video are uploaded to, video, uh, to YouTube every single day. So it's a very complex problem. Not only that, people's expectations have changed. And we're still using the same forward and backward uh, technology. So I thought to myself, how can we improve this system? And it became a personal challenge for me to actually go and improve that system for the rest of the world. So what I did at that point, I figured we're going to let Lean in solve that problem in using the power of the parallel human processor. And the way that we did that was very simply by plugging in a social network on top of every video. So every video becomes socially aware of everything that's around it. Every video now has the ability to know the, all the people that have watched it, all the people that have commented on it, interacted with it. And not only that, I have my own personal profile that allows me to track all the different videos that I've watched across the web, share it with the rest of the world so that the next person that watches a specific video can find the scenes that they're looking for. This is a very big revolution. This is the revolution that will set the course for the wave of the new technologies to come. And when that happens, we need the entrepreneurs, we need the new minds to think about the different possibilities, think about the things that really interest them, to go and see how they can utilize the power of three billion connected uh, humans into the internet. We need to be able to find solutions to those problems, and we're counting on you. Thank you.